National Assembly Speaker Nosifuwe Mapisa Ngagula has declined a request to an ad hoc committee um, that the DA was asking to be set up to investigate allegations around the theft at President Cyril Ramaphosa's farm. Now, the request, of course, comes from DA leader John Steinhazen. The Speaker says some of the suggested tasks for the committee to investigate are already being investigated by other institutions. Let's now speak to Professor Sipo Siepe, who is a political analyst. Prof, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Is the Speaker correct? Um, in, his, in her decision or is it a missed opportunity? Well, I think the speaker needs to... She's correct in the sense that there is an investigation that is taking place and that what you will have are parallel investigations. But what is very important to, to understand is that uh, various institutions are tasked with different mandates. And when the, uh, an institution or a state organ investigate it to be guided by the mandate it has and uh, in this regard it will be narrowed for that particular mandate so you could have one issue being investigated by a number of uh, state organs but each state organ will be looking at different things for for instance if you have the siu looking at the, the matter that involves a uh, uh, palapala they may be looking at uh, what the SIU is mandated to do, which is to look at the malpractice, the maladministration in terms of the state institution, state state uh, assets, in terms of the uh, public money, uh, whether that has been used uh, to uh, and or undermine the public interest. So they will be focusing on what uh, they are supposed to be doing. And when you look at the police, the police will also be looking at issues of uh, criminality which is a very different from what the uh, SIU may necessarily be looking at, although they are, the two are not uh, necessarily not, they are interlinked. But uh, their focus will be what crimes have been committed and focusing on that aspect. And then if you would then bring the public protector into the picture, the public protector may be interested in other things that have to do with uh, the code of ethics. To what extent has the president uh, undermined this? So the... Various state organs will look at the, the mandate and will lose, use the lens that speak to that mandate. And when you come to parliament, parliament is what we call the people's assembly. And where uh, one would expect that there will be more political questions, uh, issues that have to do with political accountability, that will be asked. So what the ATM and the DA are asking is for a different a form of engagement, not undermining what uh, the other state organs are doing. So if the DA and the ATM wants to take this matter up, they could actually be able to say, contrary to what the speaker is saying, to say these are investigated. The, what we are actually going to be doing is to investigate the following. Because uh, as a speaker, she also has to make sure that the, the resources of parliament are used effectively and efficiently. So if you find that the, the parliament wants to get into issues of criminality or whether a crime has been committed or whatever, it, it, she may well have a point, but it does not exhaust all the issues that the parliament is charged with. But ultimately, parliament in this case uh, must hold and is expected to hold the executive account. So I don't think uh, in this case uh, she would have a very strong position. And I foresee uh, the, the DA and the ATM taking this matter further. The Democratic Alliance is also arguing that this is once again a case where we see uh, the closing of ranks um, and they likening the situation to what we saw when there were allegations around the former President Jacob Zuma with the Ngandla saga. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, uh, Parliament is a, a political forum. And in that forum, you will have a political contestation. And the people who are there are political players. So one cannot uh, necessarily expect, uh, in as much as we would rather, would, would want to have a speaker being somebody objective and neutral. The, the reality is always uh, different because the, the speaker is also a member of a political party and they will be also informed by the political understanding ideology of that uh, party. So when 
she says yes or no, it will be seen through the lens of that party. So this idea of thinking that the speaker is apolitical is actually misguided. It is not true and it cannot be sustained. And you will see with the decisions that are being made that uh, there is a political element in it. And that political element may mean also shielding the president of the, of, of the party and the president of the country. While we talk about, um, you know, what is happening in Parliament, on the other side, there are growing calls for the President to step aside pending the investigation into this incident. We've heard recently even from an elder uh, within the organization, Mavusam Simang, saying that, um, you know, he possibly should think about that. Uh, it doesn't mean that he's guilty, but it simply allows investigations to simply unfold. Your thoughts on that? Well, that's a language that has come to haunt the president, and that is a language that has come to haunt many other people. There has always been this notion that uh, if you have nothing to hide, uh, don't uh, you should come open. And the president has also presented himself as a man who supports transparency. But we have also seen that when matters that speak to him come to the fore, there is a way in which he ducks and dives. So what people like Ms. Manga are saying is that they, well, you cannot have it both ways. You cannot call for transparency. You cannot call for exemplary leadership when you are not able to do so. And also, people are aware in this country that the, the NPA has been willing or was eager to charge people for less. I mean, we just had a case that involved a, a county house being thrown out of court on the basis of something as simply violating the... Uh, COVID-19 protocols. But here you have something much more serious where the president could easily be uh, found guilty for having violated the constitution and could also be embroiled in some, or suggestion that is embroiled in some criminal activity, uh, issues that are kidnapping, uh, defeating the ends of justice. These are much, much more serious. And people are saying the reason why the NPA is not charging it is because he's sitting as a president and having appointed those people. So if he steps aside, he might give these institutions at least a breathing space to say we can be independent. And some see his being in that position as undermining the proper functioning of those state, state organs. All right. So, Prof, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Do appreciate it.